Hey everyone, so I thought I'd do a superposition circuit analysis problem. Now the term superposition might sound a little scary. I know it did for me when I was like a young engineering undergraduate. But superposition is really a simple idea. And what, where you usually use that idea is when you're analyzing the voltage or current across some sort of linear component in a circuit where you have more than one independent power source. So in our example, we want to find the voltage across that resistor, and we have multiple independent power sources. We have a 8 amp current source, and it's independent because it is going to be 8 amps, independent of anything else going on here. And we have a 20 volt independent voltage source. It's going to be 20 volts. It's not dependent on anything else around there. So the question is, if you have these multiple sources, how do you figure out something like voltage across here? Well, here's what you do. Superposition tells you that you can pretend as if all the other sources are gone except for one and see what that effect, or what the effect it has on the component you're looking at. And then you do that for all the other sources. You turn everything else off except for the one you want to look at and see the effect it has on the component you want to analyze. So in our case, what we're going to do, we're going to pretend first that we're going to turn off this voltage supply. Pretend that's like a battery or it's, uh, it's some sort of uh, power supply in your desk and you just turn it off. If you turn it off, what happens to the circuit? Well, it's going to be a closed circuit. There's no voltage drop across there. And you find out then what this does to the voltage across here. And you get that number, put it to the side. And you, then you turn off this guy. And you see what effect this source has on the voltage across there. Remember, if you turn off this current source, that means there's not going to be any current flowing there. It's going to be an open circuit. OK, so let's see that in action, right? So if we're going to turn that guy off, it's sort of then going to look like that. Okay, so here is our 8 amp source. Our 5 ohm resistor now is going to be shorted down to here because there is no voltage drop. So there is my 5 ohm resistor shorted to that side of the power supply. Right, see that? Now then, we need to analyze the circuit, especially the voltage across here, given this is our only power supply. So what do we know? We know that this 8 amps is going through that node. And from Kirchhoff's current law then, we know whatever, whatever current is flowing through a node, that amount must also be leaving the node. So we can label that current leaving the node that direction as I want. We can label the current leaving the node in that direction, I2, and we can set up this equation. 8 amps, that's going into the node, must equal the sum of the currents leaving. So the sum of I1 plus I2. Okay, that's our first equation. We can also then figure out what these two currents are by realizing that the voltage across here is the same as the voltage across here. Right? So if you take the current times the resistance going down here, that's the voltage across there, and that's going to equal the voltage across that resistor, I times 5 ohms. Now for us, we're a little bit lucky because if you simplify this circuit, that's also 5 ohms, right? This is 5 ohms, this is 5 ohms. So in order for this voltage drop across here to be the same as the voltage drop across there, those currents are going to be the same. But let's pretend that we don't know that, and let's just do some brute force analysis here so you can see how you could approach this for, for other values of resistance. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this. Let's move this up a little bit. Simplify this circuit. 5 ohms. Current source, 5 ohms, and as we label, this is I1, 
This is I2. That's ugly, I2. Sorry about that. So our second equation would be something like V across here, which is I1 times 5 ohms. That has to equal the voltage across here, which is I2 times 5 ohms. Again, if this was a different value, then you would put that number there, and then you'd solve for one of the variables, and then plug it back in there to figure out what the, what the value is of the last remaining variable. For us, I mean, this is really simple. I1 must equal I2, right? Divide 5 by both sides, you're left with that. So, now we have a relationship between I1 and I2. Let's go back to our initial equation. I1 equals I2, so this is the same as I1 plus I1, or I2 plus I2. Okay, so 8 amps equals 2 times I2, which means I2 must equal 4. Okay, I'm pretty sure you saw that a mile away. But anyway, if I2 equals 4, guess what else equals 4? I1, because they are the same. So now we have our current I1 and I2. And remember, we want to find this voltage drop. Right, that's the initial question. What's the voltage drop across that 2 ohm resistor? So I1, right there, I1 is 4 amps. So let's label this guy as the voltage due to the current source. So over here, the voltage due to that current source equals the current flowing through that 2 ohm, which is I1, 4 amps, times that resistance, which is 2 ohms, which is 8 volts. So the current going through here will give this a voltage potential drop of 8 volts. Okay, so now we found what this does to that component. Now we need to find out what this does to that component. So we got to get rid of that guy. So how do we do that? Okay, so let's look down here. We have our 2 ohm resistor still. We have our 3 ohm resistor still. This current source is gone, right? You still have that 5 ohm resistor. Resistor and we have our 20 volt source. Okay, so let's fill in some numbers 2 ohms, 3 ohms, 5 ohms, and we want to find the volts across here. Well, how do we do that? Well, we can easily find the current flowing through here based off that voltage supply, and then once you find that current flowing through there, you take it, multiply it by that 2 ohms, and then you have that voltage drop. Oops, that voltage drop. Alrighty. Well, in order to find that current, we can just simplify the circuit. So let's put it down here. They're all in series, right? So we can just add them all up. So we can convert that into a 10 ohm resistor with a power supply of 20 volts. Ah, you can't see that. Now you can. Okay, so what's this current? Well, I'll use Ohm's law. V equals IR. So that then means I equals V, which is our 20 volts, divided by 10 ohms. That's ugly. Sorry about that. That should then give you 2 amps. Okay, so now you know that the current flowing through this circuit, flowing through that circuit, is 2 amps. If you like, I'll give you a little red pen to show you, right? So this, flowing through here. So that current is going to be 2 amps. So how do you find the voltage across here? V equals IR. So take that current times that resistor. So let's go ahead and label that uh, voltage here V, V. So this voltage due to the voltage supply. So let's go ahead and calculate that over here. So what's VV? And this is my notation. I don't think anybody else likes that. VV, well, here is the current. 2 amps times 
this resistor, 2 ohms equals 4 volts. There's our units. Okay, so now we know that this guy provides a 4 volt drop across there when it's by itself. And we know that this guy provides a 8 volt drop across here by itself. And now you add them all up. Here's the big finish. So the original V0 is what we wanted equals the sum of all the all the voltages we just calculated. So sum of VI plus VV equals 8 plus 4 volts equals 12 volts. And there you go. Okay? So the idea, just remember, the idea is simple. Superposition just means that when you take a look at a linear component like this, right, it's not an op amp, it's not something that's going to increase the, uh, the, the power that's given, that's, that's supplied to it, so it's a, it's a passive component. When you take a look at those components and you want to find out what a voltage or current is across them when you have multiple sources, just turn off everything but one, find out what that does to this guy. And then turn off everything else but another one and see how that affects this guy. And then you do that for every single independent source. And then you just add up all of those values. Right? Just like we did here. Okay. So I hope that helps a little bit. Good luck with superposition. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask below in the comment section. And I'll try to get to it when I'm not grading papers. Okay. See you later.